Good afternoon guys, or if you're watching this it's probably the morning where you are because I started uploading my videos so it would be the morning in most of my viewers time because before that I was uploading for your guys time at night uh, and I know and I feel like a lot of you guys prefer when I upload my videos so you can watch it in the morning with your breakfast or when you're getting ready for school or work. Um, let me know if you like that. But uh, anyways, it's the next day after our karaoke excursion, even though technically it's the same day since we got in at like 5.30 in the morning. Literally, guys, I went to bed at 6.30 a.m. It was ridiculous. So I slept until about 11.30. Then I woke up and I had a bit of a hangover because I did drink wine. Um, but that's okay. I just took an Advil. It's all good. Um, I didn't really film anything this morning. <laughs> I didn't film anything at all. I was just so exhausted. I'm sorry, guys. Um, but it was like my usual morning routine. Have my a million cups of coffee. I, I think I'm gonna have another, too, because, like, I need it today. And then I didn't eat breakfast, because my meal from yesterday's vlog pretty much counted as breakfast and lunch. Um, but I did have a late lunch. I had my leftover pasta salad that I made the other day, and then I had a bit of a fried chicken breast that I found in the fridge. I think it was Kim's or Toph's something. I'm not too sure. Um, but I ate it, and that's all I've had so far. I'm thinking I'm gonna go for a walk around my local area because, like I said in my last vlog, um, from yesterday, that meal I had at 5.30 a.m. was about 900 calories in total and like I don't know I'm not super strict about my calories I just like to keep a general idea um, I know I've had some comments from you guys being concerned that I'm not eating enough calories but um, I've been doing this for a long time many years and I find that um, aiming for around 1200 calories a day which generally goes over by a few like it's always just a rough estimate you guys I'm not like super strict and there's no real way of knowing the exact number of calories you're ingesting it can be different every time so um, I just like to keep a rough like I just like to keep track of how much I'm eating and this helps me just maintain a healthy weight for my body like you guys I'm not at all slender well I'm slender but I'm not I'm not skinny I'm not an unhealthy weight in fact every time I go to the doctor they're like oh everything's fine you're normal healthy body weight for you who you are and for your metabolism and the amount of physical activity you do um, keep in mind you guys I work a desk job um, which is more or less full-time so I'm sitting down for six hours a day sometimes more than that plus when I edit videos that's more sitting so some days I only walk like 40 steps um, on busy days where I have a lot of work and I have a lot of editing to do so it's not that like I'm under eating I'm just eating for what my body needs like I don't need to eat any more of that because I'm not exerting the energy of what I'm ingesting so it it, I don't know you guys you gotta kind of experiment when you're trying to figure out um, how many calories your body personally needs um, and what kind of foods work best for you to maintain a healthy weight and make you feel good um, I notice if I eat more like if I have a day where say it's 1400 calories or 1,500 calories, I generally don't feel good after that. I feel very full, I feel very bloated, I, I just don't feel comfortable. Um, but I noticed when I stick to around the 1,200 to 1,300 area, I feel normal, I feel fine, I'm satisfied, and I'm, I'm not overeating, I'm not under eating, I'm quite um, comfortable. And I do also focus on um, eating healthier choices too. Like I'm able to eat a lot more food but still have a low amount of calories because I'm eating healthier foods. Um, so for example in yesterday's vlog when I ate that convenience store food it was 700 calories for that one dish and that's because it wasn't a healthy dish. So I ended up becoming hungry again around 11 a.m. 
and significantly hungry even though I ate technically over half my day's worth of calories in one meal. So it totally depends on the types of food you're eating. So you may think 1,200 calories is not a lot of food, but it can be if you're eating healthy choices and healthy food. So you really don't need to put in those extra calories if you're eating healthy choices because you're able to eat more food. I don't know, is this making sense? Um, I'm trying to explain it to like my best of, the best of my ability. Um, but yeah, it's something like you have to research if you're really curious about it and you know, you have to experiment and find out what works best for you and your body type. But I think I'm just going to put some clothes on because I'm just like in my sports bra and skirt. And I'm gonna head out for a walk. I feel really good about myself for doing that walk. <laughs> it's funny, there was actually a lot of people out running and walking and doing like activities in my local park, um, which surprised me seeing as it was like 30 degrees outside and sunny. Um, it's not really good to run in that kind of heat, especially in direct sunlight, and a lot of people were. Um, it's really risky for like dehydration. Um, yeah, so I don't really recommend doing that. But it's funny because like seeing all those people running really made me want to run. But um, I wanted to catch Pokemon at the same time. Oh, shame. Such shame. But that's okay. Uh, I'll run next time now that I see like it's totally a thing at my local park. I've been wanting to get back into running but my um, earbuds died. Like one of them died. One of the earbuds died and then for some reason it like communicates with my phone and makes my music stop playing and start playing and opens up apps so <laughs> I can't really like run when my headphones are doing that because it's annoying and I can only really run if I have like good music going or else I just can't get in like the good rhythm or like get the energy I need um, I used to run a lot before I moved um, here to Japan but um, I stopped when I came just because it like takes you a while to like get adjusted to an area and stuff, but um, I think I'm going to start doing it. I'm going to try to wake up early every morning and go. Um, yeah. I have to start waking up earlier and not going to bed at like 2 a.m. every night. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to do some of my work because I have more work to do for today. I caught so many Magikarps too. I'm so glad I went out. And I hatched a Jigglypuff, which was sick. Those were like the only good things that happened. I caught a lot of like basic stuff, but I just wanted to do it for the experience and hatch a bunch of the eggs that I had. I think I was able to burn almost 300 calories and I walked 8 kilometers, something like that. It was good. Definitely good. So starting off for the pude jjigae, you will need soy sauce, Korean red pepper paste, honey or sugar garlic paste or a few garlic cloves and you will need some dashi soup stock you can use chicken or whatever you prefer but personally I find it best if you use a dashi or like a fish style uh, base so starting off I'm just going to be taking my garlic paste and I'm going to be having about a heaping teaspoon of that maybe a little bit more because we all love garlic my Korean red pepper paste and I'm just going to be opening that up somehow. You don't have to really be afraid of the 
Korean hello focus you honestly don't have to be afraid of Korean red pepper paste it's not as hot as you would think it is um, because it's literally like the dried peppers ground up um, surprisingly it's not as spicy like if I wanted to I could taste it and be fine it kind of has this odd sweet flavor to it which I really enjoy so I'm going to be taking a heaping tablespoon of that because it's freaking delicious. Now you can also add um, red pepper flakes, but instead I'm just going to add another half of a tablespoon of the paste in there because I don't have any red pepper flakes at the moment. Um, so I'm just adding a little more paste. Not the end of the world. Next we want to add a little bit of salt flavor, so I'm just taking my soy sauce and adding about a teaspoon of that into there. Maybe a little bit more because this is kind of a weak soy sauce. And then I'm going to be adding about two teaspoons of honey. If you're using sugar then you would want to do about one teaspoon of sugar. I find honey is a little less um, powerful in its sweetness. You'll need to add a little bit more to get the same level of sweet in it, if that makes sense. And then I'm just going to mix that together. Oh god, it smells so good. To make this recipe more um, vegetarian, oh wait, who am I kidding? This is not at all a vegetarian or vegan friendly recipe because it's loaded with meat and dairy products and the soup stock is, no, yeah, I don't know. You could try to make a vegetarian version, but it, it's not going to be at all the same because it's a very meat heavy dish. Um, but I mean, you can try if you want, just obviously replace the meats in there with um, protein alternatives, don't add honey and use a vegetable soup stock, but still, once again, like I said, it's not going to be the same at all. And then we just want to add a little bit of water, so roughly around two tablespoons. Just to loosen it up a bit. I'm just going to taste it, see how I like it, mm. oh my god, so delicious, okay, so that's it for the um, sauce flavoring, next moving on to the broth, now for this broth you want to use quite a lot of um, water, usually around 8 cups or 6 cups, but I don't have a pot bigger than this, so this is around maybe 4 cups, but I wouldn't be able to fit all my meat and vegetables in, so I'm only making a small amount, so there's not really going to be much left over. Um, it is recommended usually to use anchovy stock with this, um, something that's got a strong fish flavor. Today I'm going to be using a little bit of this um, fish soup stock that's suitable for udon and things like that. So once again I'm just going to guesstimate because this is quite potent. So I'm just adding a little bit of that. I think that was maybe like an eighth of a cup that I just threw in there. I originally showed using this. Um, this one's easier to find in international supermarkets in North America. So if you can find this, then you can get away with that. However, if you can find an anchovy um, soup stock, that's even better. So I'm just going to taste it. Yeah, that should be good. I don't want it to be too salty because I'm going to be adding a lot of my... Um, seasoning that I added previously. I might add a small splash more just for a little more flavor. I find when you're making um, things like that it's always good to undershot it a bit and then while you're cooking keep tasting it. That way you can get the right flavors you want because it's always terrible when you have too much flavor. So let's just taste. Yeah, that's good. I wouldn't want any more than that. So I think about a quarter cup of the pre-mixed um, soup stock. Um, it would be probably about half a packet of one of these. 
for some of the ingredients, I'm going to have about maybe half of this half onion. So overall, maybe a third of an onion. Then I'm going to use one of these square cheeses. This entire small package of firm tofu. And then here I have some pre-cooked um, red kidney beans. Um, maybe about half a cup, roughly. Um, you can add more or less. It's totally up to you. You can add chickpeas if you wanted. It doesn't necessarily have to be red kidney beans. Um, but I'm going to use red kidney beans today. Um, like I said, these ones are already cooked. I just froze them so that they keep better. And then I'm also going to be adding half a cup of frozen wilted spinach. So I'm just going to cut up a bit of this cabbage, maybe about a quarter of it, and throw that in the soup. Then we also have some mushrooms that Kim just bought. These ones look so cool. Oh my god. It totally doesn't matter. Yeah, so you guys can add any types of mushrooms you want or have. It doesn't really matter at all. It's personal preference. So we're going to try these cool ones today. Probably about half of this one. And then we're also going to throw in some of these ones. I'm probably going to use mm, all of them because there's only four in there. Then one of the most important things that you need for this recipe is a can of Spam. Um, you can go with the less salt added one or you can go with the classic. It really is a personal preference. So we're going to be using the whole can of this. And then you also want hot dogs. So you can do any kind of hot dogs that you like. Um, we're just going to use these ones today. I'll probably use one of the packages because there's two here. Okay, so this is where things get crazy because I have a small pot. But you want to bring your broth to a boil. I'm probably going to end up having to add more. And basically you just throw everything in. And like I said, because I have a small pot, I'm just going to add half of everything. Except I'm going to add all these sausages. So starting off with that much, then I'm going to be adding my tofu and mushrooms. Then the onions. And some of the cabbage. I feel like I cut too much cabbage, so. Then I'm going to be adding some of this kimchi. About half this package. If you can get like a larger package, that would be good. I might actually, I'm going to add a ton because I love kimchi. I wouldn't be surprised if I end up doing the whole pack at some point. <laughs> we'll see. So like I said, I like to go by taste rather than measurements. And then my frozen spinach, I'm just going to put around the sides. Then you're going to want a pack of ramen noodles. Um, they didn't have just instant ramen noodles. They only had the ones that come with the soup stock. But that's okay. It's not really the end of the world. Um, so I'm just going to add a whole thing of this. Next comes the seasoning sauce. So I'm going to add about half of this and see how it goes. So just drizzling it all over. Just that much for now. And then you basically want to boil your pude chike until the meat is cooked. That's the goal. Um, in restaurants when they make it, usually they have everything on top at once, including the noodles on the very top. But I find it cooks a lot faster and more equally in restaurants because they have the proper um, gear for that. But at home in this kind of pot, I like to do it while I watch how it goes. That way my noodles don't overcook. So I'm just reducing that heat so it doesn't boil over to about a high medium heat and just letting it kind of boil and simmer. Okay guys, so my pude jjigae has simmered and reduced 
quite a decent amount so it's not really overflowing anymore. As you can see the cabbage is not too visible so it's cooked a decent amount. The meat is nice and cooked and the flavor is good. I didn't have to add any more of the seasoning. So I'm going to go ahead and add my ramen and I'm going to be adding two packs of the ramen noodles because usually with Buda Jigae you're supposed to have a side of rice to eat with it but I just didn't feel like cooking rice. That just makes it a bit too heavy. So I'm just going to be adding my two noodle packs into there and hoping they absorb some of that liquid. You really should use a bigger pot than I have. <laughs> Everything's almost done. Next, I just need to add my cheese. I'm only going to be adding one today. I don't really think it needs to. It might be too creamy. But if you're someone who doesn't really like a lot of spice, then you can go ahead and add two cheeses to help make it not as spicy. And it basically is ready. And there it is, homemade pude jjigae. Of course, you can probably do a more professional job, but this'll do. Looks so good. So good. bruising on my arms from carrying stuff in the bags, just pulling on my skin too much. Um, so yeah, my hands were full, um, couldn't film or anything. I tried to though, like I think I got decent footage today. I was trying to make the footage a little bit different since it was all of us girls together and of course when we're out we have to film because um, we're vloggers and it was a perfect filming opportunity. So I tried to get some different footage just to like give you guys and I like a different perspective of the day. Um, showing you my breakfast, showing you what type of makeup I was putting on today, um, all that good stuff. But yeah, anyway, let's just hop into the haul because I got way more than I was expecting to get today. Because every time I go out to like Ike Bukuro or somewhere, I always have like these ideas of stuff I'm going to buy. I'm like, oh yeah, when I go out next, I have to remember to get this stuff. 